Cities in Flight is a four-volume series of science fiction novels and short stories by American writer James Blish, originally published between 1950 and 1962, which were first known collectively as the Oki novels. The series features entire cities that are able to fly through space using an anti-gravity device, the spin dizzy. The stories cover roughly 2,000 years, from the very near future to the end of the universe. One story, Earthman, Come Home, won a Retro Hugo Award in 2004 for Best Novelette. Since 1970, the primary edition has been the omnibus volume first published in paperback by Avon Books. Over the years James Blish made many changes to these stories in response to points raised in letters from readers. Topic: The books. Topic: They shall have stars. They Shall Have Stars 1956, also published under the title Year 2018, incorporating the stories, Bridge, and At Death's End, is set in the near future. The book begins in 2013. In this future, the Soviet Union still exists and the Cold War is still ongoing. As a result, Western civil liberties have been eroded more and more, until society eventually resembles the Soviet model. Alaska's Senator Bliss Wagoner, head of the Joint Congressional Committee on Spaceflight, is determined to do something about it. Scientific research has stagnated, mainly because knowledge has become restricted. On the advice of scientist Dr. Corsi, Wagoner concentrates his attention on fringe science theories. One project he has funded is the building of a bridge made of ice IV on the surface of Jupiter. This leads to one of two major discoveries which make interstellar space travel feasible, gravity manipulation nicknamed the spin dizzy, which leads to both a faster-than-light travel and effective shielding. Another project yields an anti-agathic drug, which stops aging. Wagoner is eventually convicted of treason by an oppressive regime, but not before he has sent out expeditions in a later book, it is revealed that they succeed in establishing thriving colonies. Politically, the book clearly expresses a strong opposition to McCarthyism, at its peak during the time of writing. The main antagonist is Francis the Tenth Machinery, hereditary director of the FBI, which has become a de facto secret police agency. In the final chapter he is heard to say, Bliss Wagoner is dead, with the narrative noting that, as usual, he was wrong, as his legacy will endure. Reviewing a later edition, the Hartford Courant described the novel as, a skillful mixture of human reality and technological fantasy. Topic: A Life for the Stars. In the period in between the first and second parts, the Cold War ended with the peaceful merging of the East and West blocs into a single planet-wide Soviet-ruled dictatorship, which hardly made any perceptible change as the West's political system had already become virtually identical with the Soviet one. However, this dictatorial power was broken by the spin dizzy drive which works for very large objects so that dissidents and malcontents have an easy way of escaping and going off into space. First factories, then eventually whole cities migrate from the economically depressed Earth in search of work. These space-wandering cities are called Okies. A Life for the Stars 1962 is a building's Roman describing the adventures of 16-year-old Chris Deford, born when the above process of migration had already been going on for a considerable time. When Chris goes to watch the imminent departure of Scranton, Pennsylvania, he is kidnapped and brought with it. After several adventures, Chris is fortunate to be transferred to the much more prosperous New York or at least the Manhattan portion of it, a major Oki city under Mayor John Amalfi. Scranton is run by the city manager rather than its figurehead mayor. When the two cities meet again and come into conflict over Scranton's bungling of a job, Chris is able to convince an influential friend in his old city to depose the city manager and end the conflict. Impressed, Amalfi elevates him to the newly created position of city manager of New York and gives him the status of resident rather than passenger, and thus entitled to anti-agathic drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Earthman, Come Home Earthman, Come Home 1955, G. P. Putnam's Sons, New York, combining the stories, Oki, Bindlestiff, 
Sargasso of Lost Cities, and Earthman, Come Home, is the longest book in the series. It describes the many adventures of New York under Amalfi, amongst a galaxy which has planets settled at different periods of history under loose control by Earth. After an economic collapse causes a galactic depression, New York ends up in a jungle, where Oki cities orbit a dying red giant star while waiting for work. Amalfi realizes that the vegan orbital fort, a semi-mythical remnant of the previously dominant alien civilization, is hiding among the Okies. His plan to stop the vegans involves forcing the Okies to march on Earth, attracting the vegan fort to join in the march and culminates in installing a spin-dizzy drive system on a small planet and using it to lead the march. Amalfi takes advantage of the vastly higher speed and size of the flying planet to destroy the fort, then flies New York away before the Earth police can catch them. Eventually, New York is installed on a spin-dizzy equipped planet called He, which is projected out of the Milky Way galaxy, towards the Greater Magellanic Cloud. With some of New York's spin dizzies irreparably damaged, Amalfi convinces the New Yorkers that they must find a planet to call home. On their chosen planet, New York encounters the Interstellar Master Traders IMT, a rogue city whose sacking of the planet Thor 5 damaged the reputation of Okies in general, and who have enslaved the local human population. In typical fashion, Amalfi swindles the IMT residents and sets their spin dizzy engineers to fly the city off the planet, where they are destroyed by an Earth police ship. Although Blish rarely defines how much time passes during each adventure, a late chapter implies that over 300 years pass in the course of the novel. Reviewer Groff Conklin praised it as a real, honest, pure, gee whiz space opera. <laughs> a Clash of Symbols, The Triumph of Time A Clash of Symbols, published in the U.S. as The Triumph of Time, 1959, follows the passage of Amalfi and the planet He, undertaking the first intergalactic transit. In the less relativistically distorted space between the two galaxies, evidence of a collision between two universes is detected by the Hevians, a matter-antimatter collision that reveals the cyclic nature of reality. An alien culture is also investigating this phenomenon, which will shortly accelerate to engulf all galactic space. In other words, the colliding universes will end in a transition in between the Big Bang and Big Crunch. It will be possible to modify the future development of the fresh universes which will emerge from this singularity, and Amalfi directs the New Earth residents to compete with the alien culture, the Web of Hercules, in order to prevent their manipulation of the future of the universe. As with the other books, a detailed description of the technologies used is provided, including cosmological calculus. While there are some continuity slips, the series presents a unified story of humanity's expansion across the galaxy, and the birth of a new universe. Frederick Pohl praised the novel as, "...science fiction which deals with tomorrow on its own terms," citing Blish's, "...triumph of inventions, great and small," but concluded that despite the, "...brilliance," Of the author's conceptions, Triumph suffered from its inadequate story. Topic: Fictional technology. The powerful space weapon called the Bethe Blaster operates by causing a fast atomic fusion explosion in all low atomic weight elements in its target, thus completely vaporizing its target. It efficiently and quickly destroys any Oki city which it is fired at. It was named after Hans Bertha. The Mesotron rifle is a handheld energy weapon. The Spin Dizzy is an anti-gravity and faster-than-light flight device. The drive also produces a force field barrier around the city that keeps in its atmosphere and heat. One unusual aspect of the drive is that the larger the mass inside the Spin Dizzy field, the higher velocity it can achieve. In several stories in which planets were equipped with spin dizzy drives, the speed of travel is so high only computers can react quickly enough to avoid collisions with stars. The Dirac communicator allows instantaneous communication across the width of a galaxy. It was named after Paul Dirac. It occurs often in Blish's fiction and its creation is described in the novel The Quincunx of Time. Bethe Barrier, a sort of defensive barrier sometimes set up at an Oki city's limits. Transistor metals, the story mentions germanium often, including as a money metal, but it never mentions silicon. 
In the start of a life for the stars a man booking a ride in a computer-controlled taxicab spoke his social security number to it, demonstrating computer voice recognition. Cities In the year 2010 Omnibus Edition, these flying Oki cities are named but many more are mentioned Budapest Hungary Coquilletville, Congo Dresden, Saxony Germany Pittsburgh New York City, the main protagonist city about which the stories revolve. Thorium Trust's Plant No. 8 Gravitogorsk Mars later renamed IMT equals Interstellar Master Traders Los Angeles only in a legend that was current among the Oki cities Liverpool England Bradley Vermont Lincoln Nevada a false name used for itself by the vegan orbital fort Lincoln NV is part of the postal address of area 51 Scranton Pennsylvania USA Washington, D.C. described as the sole city on the sleepy planetary capital of the system, and the place where old bureaucrats went to retire, Earth. All other cities had by this time left the Earth. Seat of operations of the Earth Police, and the Earth government which regulates and polices the far-flung Oki cities. References in other works The Spin Dizzy was used in at least two novels by Jesse Franklin Bone, The Lani People and Confederation Matador, and appears as the nickname for fictional Heim theory devices in Ken MacLeod's The Execution Channel. <laughs>